Yo, 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 New Day New Day, sorry I started that all wrong. Yo, yo, New Day New Day. So, um, I've been watching some, um, some Soul Eater. It's just like, on and off for the past, like, week or so. And it's, uh, it's beginning to pick up. Uh, so it's, it's, it's beginning to hit its peak and I, I fucking love where it's going. I am a bit afraid though because I've heard rumors that the anime ending is like it, like it's one of those endings where they didn't actually have the full story so they just made up some shit. Um so I'm kind of scared on how that's going to go. But for right now, it's it, it's pretty peak. It's pretty it's pretty good. I'm probably going to read the ending afterwards just to like I don't know, if, if they fumble the ending too hard, I'm gonna read it instead. But, right now I'm on episode 36. Uh, just finished episode 36, aka, they just finished the battle for Brew. Which, Brew, we don't really know what the fuck Brew even is. But Brew is some sort of a weapon created by Abon. Abon being a fucking... Uh, we don't know who the fuck Abon is, which is a goaded mystery in and of itself because it's just like drip feeded into the story that this guy is very fucking important. He has connections like all over the place, and he is at he is such a key figure, but we don't know who he is, and it makes sense because for some reason he's just like been hidden from history. Um, especially by Lord Death, we don't know. Like, it, it's also drip-fed that Lord Death had something to do with Abon, like they were partners or something. And he was also, uh, in in this battle for Brew, they were at the, I don't know, I don't think we get told where, but somewhere north of Alaska, I think, was the most precise description. Um... It's basically just like one huge magnetic field that fucks up everything. Uh, like you can only be in there for 20 minutes and then you just... You don't really die, but you just become a memory if you don't get out uh, soon enough. So... The reason for that is because of an explosion that happened. We don't really know much about the explo explosion itself. But we know the people that were present there, because, again, it's, like, one big memory. Like, it looks like a fucking tornado. When you go inside the tornado, it's just, like, a memory of, like, uh, years upon years ago. Um, and we see a former version of Lord Death, like, where he actually looked edgy and shit. We see Lord Death, and we see Abon for the first time. We see Abon. And there's, it's also strongly hinted that Arachne had something to do with all of this. Um, it's been such a long while since I've talked about Soul Leader, so I'm probably just gonna recap like everything, uh, everything that everyone is up to. So, I think where I left off w was with the Kishin. The Kishin just got released from uh, from the academy grounds. Aka, he was sealed. He, I think, it, was he not, was the Kishin not one of the former Death Scythes of Lord Death? I think he was. He had something to do with Lord Death, like, directly. <laughs> like one of his students or whatever. Then he got turned into a Kishin. We don't really know much about that, like, how that goes. Uh, how that, like, that whole thing functions. We don't know. But I'm expecting to find out. Especially when we find out more about the Kishin, because the Kishin has not really been that big a factor. Like, sure, it's a big factor, but we... not directly. Uh, like, it's a big-ass plot point that everything in the series revolves around, but we haven't seen much of the Kishin himself, other than his release from the... Academy's Underground. Uh, where... I also... I, I don't know how to feel about this, but... Uh, what's it called? Medusa. Medusa is still alive. Which they made such a good death scene from her. And like her connection with Stein. And this whole like, oh, I I might not have made it. I'm actually fucked. I, I'm, I'm cooked here. But at least my 
cooking um, made it so the Kishin can come out alive. Uh, so I die a happy girl, uh, a happy woman. So um, that's a that's a whole thing that was set up and not really paid off, but it, it's beginning to pay off still. I don't know. I really like the whole thing about Stein uh, and his relationship to the chaos energy because he is slowly being taken over, like more and more. And he's like, you can see that he's actually, when he was asked about it for the first time, he actually considered joining Medusa, but he... Because they they basically, they share the same ideology. But Stein has the ability to push these ideas away. Uh, to just like have faith in the new generation or whatever. Like whatever, you know, whatever senseis in anime do, he does that. Where Medusa doesn't. But otherwise, they're basically the same person, which is really fucking interesting, and I just want to see more of it. Which, it was, a, it was such a shame when Medusa died, and then it was revealed that she didn't actually die, and now she, <laughs> now she's canonically a lolly. Uh, so that's funny. Uh, she is legit, legit one of those, like, oh, I'm, I look like a six-year-old, but I'm actually a 400-year-old witch. It's not directly stated like that, but it, it is what it is. Um... So, hey, that's a that's a whole thing now, and she's apparently I I really like her thing she's got going on because she's basically orchestrating a war. She's basically Kabuto from Naruto. He's basically she is basic. Shut up. She's basically Kabuto, like orchestrating a whole war um, between two factions. Uh, she is. She wants. Both the destruction of the academy, Death's, Death Academy, and Arachnophobia. Arachnophobia being the organization that Lady Arachne has, or owns, or is the leader of. Which, we don't really know what their whole shtick is. We can guess, uh, but for now... What the fuck? That was not... God, I hate stick drift. Um... Yeah, I still haven't fixed my controller. It's uh, it's something. What the fuck? This thing just continues moving. It's it's just chilling. Okay, so basically, Arachne is a is a witch from ages ago that apparently has ties with uh, Lady Medusa. And that's as far as we know. I'm expecting to know more by the end of the series, but. For now, for now, that's pretty much all we know. Uh, Arachne also has, she has so much fucking power, and she is, like, the most interesting thing about her organization, I think, is the, the guy that I can't remember the name of, but he is basically, like, he's not a bad guy, he's just a, a samurai. Wah, He's basically just a samurai that is basically a gun for hire, or swords for hire, I suppose, that has chosen to work for Arachne, even though he clearly, like, we met him before and he clearly has some sort of moral compass, um, but that's not... Uh, he, he even gets directly asked about it by, I think, Sid. Uh, he directly gets asked, like, why do you, why did you join Arachne? That's fucking stupid. And he doesn't really get an answer. He just avoids the question, which is very intriguing. And I really, really want an answer now because I've been thinking that myself. Like, why the, f why is he here? Like, you know, it's it's your typical evil organization. Like, you have Arachne at the top, then you have some sort of like officers or something. In uh, the first one being Mosquito, aka the the small man with the big nose. Apparently his big nose is just a gimmick um, to make him look like a mosquito. Which, I mean, it's a funny bit in and of itself. Um, another one is... So there are three of them, pretty much. Uh, the other one is the Chainsaw Man. Uh, not the Chainsaw Man, but just a Chainsaw Man. 
And he's apparently also a puppet master uh, of some sort. Uh, I don't know. He was basically... I don't really know what my opinion on him is. I think I'm gonna like him more as the series goes on. But right now he's just kind of like... He's just kind of mid. His biggest... Uh, his his biggest thing he did was having a fight against Justin, and Justin being the goat he is, I just want to see more of him. And Chainsaw Man man made me see more of him, so that's like the biggest thing he has ever done. Uh, otherwise, he's a bit fucking annoying. The third officer of Arachne of Arachnophobia being the samurai guy. Who I am expecting 100% to just like turn tail and run when things get like too too, uh, too complicated, I guess. Like he's just gonna turn around. Pro now that I think about it, it's probably just as simple as Arachne has taken his like sister hostage or something, and that's the only reason he works for Arachne. Um. So that's a that's a whole thing. Also, like, okay. So what what just happened was that they apparently I don't know why they only do it now. They like both organizations. They they go for this brew weapon. We don't know what brew is or what it does. We have now seen the weapon, which is more than way more information than we had before. Uh, we've now seen Brew, but I don't know why both organizations only went after it now at this specific time. Uh, maybe there's an answer for that, maybe there's not, who really knows. Um, but they went for it after... So what first happened was like what felt like a filler episode of Kid, uh, Kid and the Thompson sisters. They were going after some sort of other weapon made by Abon. Then they, you know, they had a scuffle with one of, uh, I think one of Mosquito's goons. Or at least one of Arachne's goons. And they just... I mean, it, it's, it's a simple little side story. They beat up the, they beat up the bad guy, then they get the weapon, which is apparently some sort of key. And where the key is, is just etched into it is both Avon's name and oh so many people uh, so many things are falling into place right now that I'm talking about it uh so Avon's name is etched into a a box or a key or something and beside him is also etched in the name death where it's very intriguing that you know death the kid aka Death's kid. That, that was pretty explanatory. I didn't have to say that. Uh, it, it's his mission. So, like, is this whole thing, like, set up for him to slowly find out about his dad? Or is it just, like, con for convenience sake? Because immediately when he sees this and asks, like, questions for the bad guy, and the bad guy begins to answer a bunch of questions, uh, Sid comes in and straight up just kills the bad guy. And is not questioned about that. Like, that's just the thing he does. Uh, like, Sid, Sid, he's an assassin, sure. But the guy was not a threat, and that is very sus. Like, was this on direct orders from Lord Death? Did he know what this mission entitled? Like, did he know? Or did he only find out? Or was it Sid himself? Did Death not have anything to do with this? Who knows? Also, I I really need to talk about just the aesthetic of everything, because this whole mission, like just this whole like what two episode, maybe even one episode mission, it all happened on a like a fucking bullet train in the desert. That was not the way you were going. On a bullet train in the desert, like. It's apparently run for like fucking 500 years or something, and it's never been a second late, which is, you know, very, uh, very, like, this, this mission has Death the Kid written all over it, right? Um, but, 
essentially just the fucking aesthetics of just a big desert with the fucking oh god like each time i come back to soul leader i forget that the sun and the moon exist and they're just they're just sitting there sometimes just like laughing uh just like doing shit i still hope that there's actually plot relevance to the sun and the moon but apparently i i mean i guess there does there doesn't have to be i just i just really like the guys and i want to see more of them uh, even though they haven't been relevant other than just being they're just chilling but like everything ab surrounding this is just like so fucking it, like it's it's triggering my five-year-old brain like yeah this is fucking cool and it's literally a set piece for like one episode like sure it it's a somewhat important episode but it's not that important like we could have found out about Abon in some other mission like longer mission maybe uh, I guess that would destroy the pacing too but you know there are many ways to reveal that Abon is a figure that exists and this is just one of them this is a really good way to just introduce the concept of Abon I guess uh, Rosa um, also, when Kid comes back to, like, the school library, like, the academy library, god, that was, that was awful. He tries to find out something about Abon, and it, there's just nothing there. Like, sure, there's a book about it, uh, but it was already rented out, and he pretty, uh, Death pretty quickly snuffs out that it was rented out by Medusa, on the day that the Kishin appeared. Which is very sus. Uh, especially because from from what they know, Medusa is dead. Like, that's, that's just a fact that they have to live with. Uh, everyone except Krona knows this. Krona being, you know, one of the... Basically Medusa's child that she fucking tortured for her entire life. And is now severely traumatized. And she is... Uh, fuck. He. Sorry. He's basically being manipulated right now. And doesn't want to be. And, like, it's very complicated. But I like where the story is going for... For Krona. Um, I don't know. I didn't like Krona at all in the beginning. But he's warming up to me. Just, like, from... Being complex, I guess, instead of just a wimpy child. Uh, it, I don't know, he was fucking terrifying the first moment we met him. And, like, in the church or wherever it was. Like, in, I think it was a church in Italy. Somewhere. Chrono was fucking terrifying, especially with his weapon. Fucking Ragnarok. If you have a... Go mo and Ven! Uh -huh. So, especially with a weapon named fucking Ragnarok. Like, you have to be kind of a baller, right? And Krona was not a baller whatsoever, which was disappointing, but... It, it, it makes up for it in, like, this weird way. Uh, I don't know how to describe it. It's not... It, Krona is not really that important to this whole thing. Um, fuck me. Okay, I need to shut up to, uh, in order to not die immediately. Am I getting my hopes up in, in a deathless? In a hitless? Fuck. Hitless Marmu? Yeah, I did. That was such a good half, first half of the fight though. Damn. Lost two, like, right immediately when I started talking. This is... This is bad. Oh, well. Shit happens. So that's basically... Where the story is right now. Is that we just went on this mission. Where... Now... It's weird because the Academy thinks... 
that Mosquito, aka Arachnophobia, now has this brew weapon. Brew is a weapon made by Abon, I don't know if I said that yet. Um, and we don't know what the fuck it does. Nobody really does. Uh, except for like a few people who are just like mysterious in general, so I guess it makes sense that they know. I also expect Lord Death to know. Um, and yeah, they, like, the Academy thinks that they have, that Arachnophobia has it. And Arachnophobia also thinks that they have it. They at least don't think anyone else has it, but it's revealed at the end of this episode that no, fucking Medusa has it. Of course Medusa has it. And this is just like one step of her plan of, you know, again, orchestrating this whole war that's going on. Uh, and she apparently, she wants to help the Kishin. That's his whole, that's her whole shtick. Is she wants to help the Kishin thrive because that way the human like the entirety of the human race will finally begin to evolve again like you know natural selection and all that shit um which is basically where again the f fucking the differences like medusa and stein are very very much like the same person here right but the main difference being just Stein is fine with, you know, humans just, like, chilling for a while. Uh, whereas Medusa is fucking tired of this shit. Again, probably because she's lived for, like, 800 years. I don't actually know if these special people, aka, like, Stein, aka these, like, what are they called? They're, they're called Meisters. Meisters and Weapons. I don't know how long they live for, I don't know how old they are, but I don't expect Stein to be 800 years old. Um, so maybe that's the only difference, like we find out in some sort of backstory that no, Medusa used to be this way. And we slowly see that her decline into madness, which we are currently seeing with Stein, which would just intertwine their characters even more. Uh, I would actually like that a lot. Uh, not guaranteed to happen though, but hey, a man can dream, right? So That's basically the difference between them and She just you know the Kishin in her eyes and Medusa's eyes is like the fucking the peak of evolution and She wants some sort of humans to adapt to She just wants something to adapt to the Kishin in order to, you know, become stronger and become more powerful and, you know, whatnot. Uh, and it's really, like, the more I get into this series, the more I question death. Uh, because Stein, I've basically got Stein down right now. And I expect him to, like, fully develop into madness as the series, like, goes on into the, like, final sta stages, final stretches. Especially because, uh, I haven't mentioned this, but Medusa has planted, via Krona, Medusa has planted a fucking, some sort of snake, some sort of madness snake inside, uh, one of the new death scythes that has been called into the academy. I can't remember her name, but she is partnered up with Stein. And each time they, like, soul resonate, they, she, her snake that has been planted in her, is fucking up Stein and just turning him like progressing his madness in like even further even faster and it's all a part of Medusa's plan to like fuck up the entire academy because you know Lord Death puts a lot of trust in Stein which is really interesting and I I don't know if I trust that logic uh, just because of how mysterious death is. Like, we just see glimpses of death sometimes that are just uh, so very sus. And we don't know if that side of him is just gone. Also, it's weird because I thought, like, you know, the fact that he was in this... Uh, inside this memory thing, inside this tornado thingy. 
kind of implies that the guy is dead. If not dead, at least gone. So I'm thinking, what if what we see of him is genuinely just a guy? It's genu genuinely a dude that just tries his best at, like, you know, growing up, uh, being a being a good role model for children and whatnot. And the version we see in the flashback, okay, the... Also, can I just say how fucking genius it is to have a flashback and, like, in this form, where the characters interact with the flashback, pretty much. Uh, it's fucking genius. And... Like, okay, so basically my train of thought is, death is split into two people. One of them being the one we see now, and one of them being the one that we saw here in the flashback. Um, that would be pretty, pretty goaded, pretty baller. Um, but I don't know what to expect, really, because I don't, like, we don't know the abilities of Lord Death. We just don't. Uh, and I'm expecting to find out way more about him in in terms of uh, like w when when we find out more about Death the Kid. Like I'm expecting to find out way more, but I don't I don't know if I'm getting my hopes up too much. I don't know. I just like Death the Kid, and I would like to see him more like develop more relations with his father, I guess. Okay, this is... this might be goaded. I'm gonna shut up here because I actually have a chance of winning. Shouldn't get my... hopes up too early. Was that three fucking Aspids? Thank god I got rid of them. Okay, I just need to heal here. My hands are so fucking sweaty. Fuck. Fuck me, dude. Yeah, jump. Okay. Shit, I thought for real he jumped to the... Uh, he was a goner. Okay, okay, okay. We can just we can just edge death here. We are we are good. We are edging death. Holy fucking shit. Okay, we are this is second day in a row we got past collector. I can I can do this. We're getting somewhere with these runs finally. Fucking finally. Now I just, I need to figure out how to actually heal against God Tamer because I can't for the life of me do that. Uh, for some fucking reason, I just can't. And also, whenever I do, he just kind of walks into me. Uh, I guess I just figured it out. Somehow. So, we'll just... I mean, I say that I try to to do this run safely, um, but I don't know if I'm gonna succeed in that, because I, I don't think this is a, this is a fight you can do safely, but it's time to figure out, I guess, fuck around and find out, what the fuck was that hitbox? Okay, come at me, come at me, roll, 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 thank you. And he's gonna roll again, and then I can heal. Yes, sir, okay. That was a bit risky. And we can do this, and then we can jump. He, I did not jump when I said I wanted to jump. And he's gonna spit, and I'm gonna jump 
up to the wall. I'm gonna edge the wall. I'm gonna. All right, all right. What the fuck was that? What did he even do? I just want to play this safely. Um, yeah, this might be a this might be a problem, but we're doing good. We're doing good. Okay, so we now are on a record track pace, um, being my own record. Because I have not yet gotten past Grim in an official run. I have many times in like my Pantheon 3 runs. But not here. I'm expecting it not to be that hard. Uh, I don't think... It's rare that I actually died to Grim in Pantheon 3. So I'm expecting this to be easy. I'm only, like, whenever I get to Nightmare King Grim, that's when I expect him to fuck me up. God, I'm on the wrong side, shit. I need to concentrate here in order to not fuck up. Okay. We are not cooked. God, the music is also just so eerie that I can't really... I'm... I'm messing up just from the atmosphere alone. Alright, alright, alright. Um, the problem is now that I am probably gonna get past Grim, I can't remember what's after Grim. I don't know, I, I can't, I don't know what, I, uh, what what's expected. I don't know what I'm gonna go up against now. Uh, like, you can see how easy Grim is right now. I'm only... Like, again, Nightmare King Grim is the problem. This is just, like, a quick break fight. And I can't believe that I died twice to this guy uh, in these runs. Both times I got to him, I just died immediately. Yeah, shut up. God damn it. Waste of the soul... So yeah, I can't actually remember. I think it's like fucking Umu or something, uh, or that might be that might be in the Pantheon three. But anyway, now we're officially the furthest we've ever been, which is somehow sad. Or somehow, do we get a breakpoint here? Sure. Let me just. I don't know what the fuck that does. Okay. Let me wipe my palms here. Oh, wait. Goofy as hell. Lore drop? Okay. Well, that was the lore. Who do we go up against? The Watcher Knights? Okay. Okay, sure. Holy shit, I have not fought Watcher Knights since the base game. What do I... What do I do? That was not what I was doing. God, I hate... Stick Drift is... The most annoying piece of shit ever. Oh yeah, the strat was to like hit them both somehow. God, there's so much going on. Just like screen shaking and... Fucking colors. Particles everywhere. Shit. Yeah, that was... I cooked up. Sorry. The issue is when I can't actually see them, I am just kind of, I'm just kind of guesstimating like what they're gonna do, and that's not always the best, as you can clearly see here. Uh, please let me get this off. I'm also, I really, I probably should focus on one of them instead of like. Uh, what are you doing? What the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah god damn it. I, damn, I could not see that animation because the other one was in front. Okay, I need to... 
this is a fight I probably need to practice because this is the first time in like two years that I fought Watcher Knights. I forgot Watcher Knights even existed. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. Um I think the strat is to just down spell spam like a lot. Like whenever you are in the slightest bit of trouble. I think that's just the strat. But I don't know. Again, it's been two years. Well, I'm gonna do some research on how to beat Watcher Knights, I guess. Um, over and out. See you tomorrow.